Good morning, folks. The sun has been pretty quiet, but showing signs of increased activity the last day. We've got top science news from the Earth out into deep space, and we begin with our star here watching a relatively benign 24 hours. A small surge and pop just south of the equator, facing Earth, was a filament that released but only up into the corona. We've got no significant flares or CMEs. Solar wind and geomagnetic conditions are calm. We're watching new sunspots and those filaments which still pepper the disk for eruptive activity. Heading to the science news, we have the next JPSS ready to launch in November. This is important because of the dozens of satellites that look back at Earth. The first JPSS is the only one giving us polar shots. We only get them once an hour and so it will be fantastic to get a higher cadence with the second satellite. This is its look down on the North Pole, by the way, and let's contrast the higher daylight fraction of the North with the growing dark of the southern winter. That bright arc you see is actually auroral, solar wind coupling and atmospheric excitement from charged particle precipitation. Speaking of looking at the weather and climate, they need to repeat this study all over the world. The tropopause light interaction is different than they realized, and that changes how they see incoming sunlight and even albedo, and it's intimately related to the clouds that reach that height as well. Which hopefully, every veteran observer recalls, is one of the most damning and extreme uncertainties and overall failures of climate models. The latest iterations have not fixed a thing. Heading out to space next, I read this one and literally exclaimed out loud to nobody but myself, oh, you don't say. Folks, it has been one of the things mainstream astronomers say about the aluminum-26 found at Earth, and they're disfavoring the solar micronova cause idea. They've been saying the isotopes must have come from nova events at nearby stars, and that even a major solar event could never produce it. Except that now even regular stellar winds can produce it. A reminder that they have found every known element in the solar wind, that was the JPL Genesis mission in the 90s, and now any fleeting thought that the sun has no way to make aluminum-26 just got crushed by the implication of this discovery in space. I always prefer the uranium isotope analysis because the short half-life tells us Nova were more recent and from the sun, but I guess we'll take scientific honesty where we can get it these days. Last but not least, folks, the Himawari 8 satellite has confirmed that circumstellar extinction is the cause of the Betelgeuse dimming, a dust production event at a star, one of their silly names for something that is truly a micronova event. This is so important because it wasn't long ago that only white dwarfs could have recurrent nova-like events, they said. Now we know it works for giant stars as well, all different kinds of giant stars, actually, which tells us that it's about the instigation, the triggering, not the star or progenitor environment itself, not by any strict rules. By the way, there is a possibility they are mistaken in this paper, and the dust coagulation occurred closer to Earth, like in our own solar system. In which case, that's the extra dust we've been seeing identified and which must be coming from the galactic current sheet. That was a veteran observer's Easter egg there at the end, and we greatly appreciate your support. Learn about everything I just discussed and much more relating to the sun, Earth, climate, the galactic current sheet, and Earth's catastrophe cycle with our books at otf.cells.com. Amazon is shutting down the platform in two weeks, so get the textbooks, children's books, and other gear while they last. We've got shots of our star to close. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.